for more on this, let's speak to Janine Francois, who joins me from London. She's an activist and academic whose research entails the race, racism, cultural and heritage sector. Great to have you on the programme. Um, Thank you. For change really to, to happen, do statues need to be taken down and also street names, for example? I think it's important, it's a symbolic gesture that we recognise how our public space, so the ways in which everyday British people walk around in our lived environment is heavily shaped and marked by slavery and colonialism. The seeing statues can be such stark and heavy reminders to those whose histories are affected by it, in particularly someone like myself. And so seeing them without any kind of understanding about who these individuals are, how they have shaped our contemporary British politics and cultural life is a very important conversation to be had to understand how these individuals are implicated and part of a wider structure of the British Empire and colonialism. And uh, Janine, you're in London. Uh, the Mayor of London, yes. he has an idea. He wants to uh, get, have a review of all public monuments with a committee that he says will ensure it increases the represent representation of all minorities. Is this the way forward? I think it's very important. I want to add a fact that in 2015, UK Treasury, in, in their what was a positive spin, put out a tweet saying that the British public was a part of paying um, the slave owners for the loss of property and it was up to a modern value of £17 billion in today's money. And so that's someone like myself and many other members of the public whose histories are tied into this. So, yes, it's important that we have a variety of different stakeholders from different communities, from different backgrounds, professions, um, you know, academics, activists, artists, um, people who live in the area to so everyday citizens are, as a democratic structure, are involved in the impacts of these kind of statues on our lives. Otherwise, it's a top-down approach and people who have been campaigning for decades, um, have been raising these issues for decades, can have their voices heard. This is not an overnight thing. What we're seeing here is the bubbling of being left out of democracy, the bubbling and being, you know, unheard and raised, not having a point of view taken on board. And so ultimately, these kind of issues, people take things into their own hands. Now, that's not violent to me, or that's not, you know, undemocratic. If anything, it's the complete opposite. It's completely democratic. It's completely just, because it means that people are saying, this is our community, this is our nation, and we want to do something about it, because those with the structures of power have not listened to us. And that is direct action at its height. Janine, I want to read you a quote from uh, Sir... Jeff Palmer, Scotland's first black professor, and he advised caution. He says, I'm absolutely adamant that if you start removing the statues or street names to do with slavery, in 50 years' time, you'll forget the history of that slavery. Will people forget? I know 50 years is a long time, but, <laughs> <laughs> but will people forget? No, because 50 years, we're still remembering. We're remembering histories that happened over 300 years ago, and this, you know, my, I'm a Caribbean person, that's where my heritage lies. Um, I don't know my ancestors who were enslaved, but I know it happened. So I think it's quite a shallow argument to talk about removing structures as it's, it's part of a framework of public erasure. Well, I would argue we really function on colonial, colonial amnesia anyway. We can just, we hardly teach it in our education, in our curriculum, in the schools. I certainly wasn't taught about Jenny, it. Jenny, that's a really, really great there. point. I'm also from the UK hmm. in London. Just yes. our history, just mm. it, how good is it? And um, beyond <laughs> a, a black history, just history mm. in general. Is there a problem there? I personally think there is. I agree. Um, I'm very thankful that I have parents who um, were empowered to educate me, not just on black history, but global history, may I add. It wasn't just on the specifics of race. And who wanted me to be a citizen of the world, right? Who wanted me to understand how different communities, you know, operate and their stories. And this is a profession that I now have. And so there's so many children, regardless of their ethnic or cultural background, who didn't even know that Britain had an empire. And I speak very personally when I was working with Hackney Museum, amazing um, community resource that really speaks to issues of migration and, you know, the ethnic um, democracy of that area. And we did workshops with children in year five and year six, and they didn't know anything about the Windrush. They didn't know anything about the empire. And so we're actually 
we are as an infrastructure, as a system, raising our citizens of all backgrounds to be actually ignorant and to be unaware and to then think that removing a statue is somehow erasing history when we could be teaching about the process and why that statue was erased in our curriculum. It can be preserved in other spaces. It can be discussed in museums. Plaques can be still be put up without the statue. So the conversation of erasure, I think, is very shallow and I think it's quite a, a kind of short-sighted conversation to not really tackle, I would say, the deeper issues at play. Just very quickly, I know this is a, 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 yes. a tricky one, but yes or no, is the plaque, a plaque the solution? No, it's not, but it's a starting point. All right. Janine Francois, it's been a pleasure to speak to you Thank and you. Uh, it's really lovely to hear that uh, a London accent uh, when you're far away. Thank you so much.